Hey beauty babes, oh, welcome to my channel. I am Maria, AKA Agape Love Girl. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today we have a makeup basket video. All right, so if you are new here to my makeup baskets, the way I do them is I will unload um, everything from my previous month. I'll talk a little bit about some of the products, my thoughts after having used them. If there's any kind of update or anything I wanna tell you guys about, if I'm decluttering or keeping or anything like that. Um, and, and then I'll put stuff away. And then I will get into the new stuff for this month which is October and um, do that so if you are not interested in hearing my thoughts on last month's products I'll put a timestamp on the screen as well as in the description box that way you guys can easily skip forward to um, just the new stuff I'm gonna be putting or new new to my makeup basket but I will actually have some actual new stuff from my makeup basket this month too but anyways with all that being said let's go ahead and get into it let me just get this off the top um, I like to usually go in order of how things apply but since this is on top and I need to set it aside I'll go ahead and talk about it now but this is the Maybelline City Bronzer this was not something that was originally in my makeup basket last month that I put in it's something that I bought um, towards the, I don't know, like the first week or so of the month. I had mentioned in my last makeup basket video that I was going to be purchasing some more drugstore products to go with my full face of drugstore makeup video that I did in collaboration with Heather Austin. Um, that video is live, so if you guys wanna see it, I'll link it if you haven't seen it already. I went out and purchased this for um, that video and I actually really, really like this bronzer a lot. It ended up being my go-to for the rest of the month once I started using it, but unfortunately I dropped it and it broke. But it's a lovely, just, I really like this a lot. I did get the shade 300, I believe. I think there's um, two other shades. There's lighter shades. I think this is the deepest one, but I really like this. I do want to keep this in here for this month, but I need to fix it. All right, let's go ahead and get in with some primer. The first one is, um, this is a spray primer. This is from Catrice. And I think you guys kind of already know, I've talked about a little bit last, um, the last couple times I've mentioned this in videos, that I really like this a lot. It has a really lovely scent that I always say smells expensive <laughs> um, and I really like it. One thing I will note is that it um when you apply it, it will leave your skin a little bit sticky, a little bit tacky, which I kind of like. I think that kind of helps with um, it pr um, to help prime your skin and kind of grip um, product. But you definitely do want to wait for this to fully like set down and dry down. While it will leave your skin just a little bit like tacky, um, that's fine. But if it's not fully dried down to where there's still a little bit of wetness, not just tacky, but wet, um, ness on your skin that will kind of mess with your foundation and the way it lies down and kind of make it just look just look weird so um, in that sense this product is a little bit finicky so not the best but it's something I had to kind of learn but um, once I realized that was the issue um, I, I had no problems with it so I just fully make sure this is dried down when you use it and then it works really great I really like it and it's convenient because it's a spray and all that kind of stuff so I'm um, really like that of course gonna put it away for this month though all right, and then the It Cosmetics Your Skin But Better Primer Plus. Um, this has been my makeup basket for like the last couple of months since I first got it because I was really putting it to the test. Um, but unfortunately, I, I used it a handful of times this month, but not a lot because I did put a lot of focus on that spray and then these CoverGirl primers. So um, I was hoping to maybe get a little bit more use out of this, but ended up putting a lot more focus, like I said, on some of the other products. But I do really like this, pr this primer. Do I feel like it's really doing things as far as like the pore refining? Mm, I don't really know if I feel like it's doing that is the thing. Um, but I do think it's nice. Um, I will say though, and you guys probably already know this if you're familiar with me and my channel, is like I'm not super big into primers. I don't really know for sure if I feel like they're really doing anything. I like the ones that uh, are a little bit more hydrating and things like that because it's nice to have that kind of a product for me personally with drier skin. So I don't mind them, but do I always feel like they're necessary? Mm, no, not really. You know, I feel like it's an extra step in my routine that I don't know if I really need because I usually pack on the setting sprays, let's be honest. Um, so for me personally, I can like live without these type of products, but I do think it's a nice primer. So, I mean, I'll give it that. <laughs> Moving on to the CoverGirl primers that, like I said, I put a lot more focus on. So they, um, there is a mattifying one as well as a mo um, moist, <laughs> Can I ever talk? I don't think I can. A uh, moisturizing one. I did use both of these interchangeably throughout the month just to really test them out. Now I've said before that because I have drier skin and I don't tend to deal with oiliness really, um, like sometimes in my T-zone I might get a little bit oily, but it's nothing crazy. It's nothing that I feel like I need a mattifying primer for, but I wanted to give this a try because this actually really intrigued me. Now most mattifying primers are very, very thick. They're very just, like you put them on your skin and instantly it feels like 
like it's sucking all the moisture out of your skin and for some people I'm sure that is necessary for me not so much that's why I usually don't like those type products but let me just show you and if you watched my um, make a uh, testing covergirl products I'll link it in the eye if you have not seen it um, you'll you would have seen this already but um, if not and you're interested to hear a little bit more about it and see this these products in action then you could watch that video but anyways I'll show you right here so this is how it comes out do you see how like lotiony and um, uh, just thin that is it's so so nice so that's why it intrigued me and I was like okay I will give this a shot I will use this it's very nice um, and I really really enjoyed it um, I obviously can't really super testify to if it uh, works for being super mattifying or not because I don't get oily um, but I will say that as someone with drier skin I didn't feel like it dried me out or anything I felt like it was very nice to wear and to be completely honest it almost seems like both of these they worked the same for me. It didn't matter which I was wearing. Um, they both essentially worked very nicely for me and I enjoyed both of them. Um, I probably don't need to keep both of them though because I, I this is a lot of primer and I, yeah, I'm always getting new primers and products to try. So I'll most likely um, gift this to my daughter who does have oily skin. And then after she uses it for a bit, I'll, I'll see what she thinks. And I feel like I need to update you guys. Maybe I'll update in a pinned comment or in the description box so you guys can have at least an opinion of someone with oily skin. And by the way, for those who don't know, my daughter is 16 years old. She doesn't wear a ton of makeup, but she does wear um, primer, foundation, and concealer. So Anyways, she'll, she should be able to give kind of a good idea of, of how this works for someone with oily skin. So I um, will put these both away for the month, but I'm going to go ahead and declutter this, quote unquote, declutter this to my daughter and I will keep the hydrating one. All right, let's move on to foundation. So I'm going to pull this one out because this one has also been in my makeup basket for the last couple of months, pretty much since I got it. And this is the Pure Cosmetics 4-in-1 Love Your Selfie Foundation and Concealer. I have not put this out of my makeup basket because I just love it so much. It has been my go-to. I am absolutely, and I'm sorry to say it for anybody who this annoys, but I am obsessed. I am obsessed with this foundation. It is good. I love that it has such good coverage. I, and you guys have seen pretty much any, most of the videos this past month of September that I've used this in, and even before that. But you guys have seen me apply this foundation like if you watch my get ready with me's and things like that i usually just apply apply a little bit i like to use the doe fit applicator this does have a pump and it has a doe fit applicator as well i'll use the doe fit applicator um, and just put a little bit under my eyes and like in my t-zone area and then i'll take a brush and just brush that all around my whole face and it covers my whole face beautifully it has such good coverage it also looks very very natural on my skin it feels really good i Oh, I just love it. I love it. I'm trying not to say obsessed, but I feel like I kind of am. I feel like this has become my holy grail, absolute favorite foundation. But I have noticed that already my tan is starting to fade. So this color is starting to look a little bit too dark on me, a little bit too orange at the moment. So I am going to finally say a farewell to it um, this month. And also I have several other new uh, foundations that to try or that I will be trying. Well, maybe not several. Oh, we'll get to it. You'll find out. <laughs> um, so I'm going to put this away. But oh my gosh, you guys, I'm so tempted to um, get another shade of this because I just love it so much. Do I need a new foundation because I have so many in my collection? No, I do not. So I'm going to try not to do that, but I want so badly to get a lighter shade of this. I do have some minis though in lighter shades, so I might actually pull some of those. I'm going to be traveling. I think I already said that. I might pull some of those minis to take with me because I just don't want to be without it, to be honest. <laughs> um, but anyways, yeah, so this one will um, uh, be out of my basket this month, finally. I'm sure some of you guys are probably glad. <laughs> and then the CoverGirl True Blend Matte Made Foundation. Um, this one you guys saw me use again in my um, CoverGirl video when I was testing all the new products that CoverGirl sent my way. Um, and this was a foundation that I did a review on. A long time ago when it very first launched and I was not super impressed with it. Now I don't know if they've changed the formula or what but this does seem slightly different um, and I, I felt like I liked it a little bit better. Now I didn't gravitate towards using this a ton this last month because like I said I, I kept reaching for my Pure Cosmetics one and then when I wasn't using that I was grabbing this Maybelline one but I did try to use this a couple more times just to kind of really see what I thought and I like it better than I remember I did. Now I don't know if it's because my skin is doing better now or like this seem this formula or whatever they did like got updated or better i know like last time when i first got this it had like these white little pigment spots all over and i wasn't dealing with that with this one so i don't know what's different but i seem like i, I feel like i like it a little bit better now but i will say though 
um, it's not necessarily my preference and this isn't the foundation's fault it's just a preference thing so this is a matte foundation and it truly is a matte foundation like um, I don't necessarily feel like it's leaving me super super dried up like I don't feel like my skin's dehydrated when I use it but it's a lot more matte feeling than I personally would prefer I don't mind a matte foundation but I much more prefer a natural feeling foundation this one just it left me feeling a little bit too matte so it wasn't my favorite and I didn't like using it a ton this month but I, I like I said I'll give it that I liked it better than I originally did so there's that but this will be going out of my basket this month <laughs> and then lastly for foundations I have the Maybelline matte and poreless this is the foundation I use for my full face of drugstore fall makeup I love this foundation I hadn't used it in a long time and um I pulled it out because I remember it was one that was my favorite quite a while ago when I was using it constantly. This is actually the second bottle I have purchased and gone through. And just using it again, I remembered that oh, I still really love this foundation. While it is a matte foundation, it's not matte like the CoverGirl one. Like it doesn't leave my skin feeling like it's super dry. It feels more like a natural finish foundation to me personally. I love how thin and lightweight it is, but still gives pretty good coverage. Um, so I, this was, I was, it was like, what did I, did I compare this to this in that video? I can't remember. I think what I compared it to is like putting on um, old, like broken in shoes. It's like, you know, they, they're they great. It's older. Um, you don't wear it as often, but when you put them back on, it's like, ah, oh, it's so comfortable. It's so good. You know what I mean? Like that's what this foundation is to me. I really, really love it. And I'm actually almost done with it. It's hard to tell because it's like the foundation is not like draining down. It's pretty coated on the sides, but I think like, I think it's about down to here, if I could kind of gauge from the way it feels. Down to about here is what it feels like, so I think I'm actually going to keep this in my makeup basket this month and just try to finish it up because this is a little bit old. I think it's probably close to a year old that I've, that I've had this now, so I think I, I might as well just finish it up, so I'm going to keep it in my basket this month. Moving on to concealers, the only concealers I had in my basket this month were the CoverGirl, um, the new CoverGirl True Blend Undercover Concealers. When I did my rewind video and when I did my first impressions of these, I kind of still wasn't quite sure my thoughts on them. I felt like I needed to use them a little bit more to really develop my thoughts. That's why they went to the basket this month so I could really use them and see what I think. And I will say that now after having used them all last month, literally only these, I really like them a lot. They are very full coverage. A little bit goes a long way. Now these are more of a very matte, drier formula. Um, and I don't say this lightly because I feel like everybody compares them to this, but I do feel like these are comparable to Tarte Shape Tape. And I feel like, did I say this in another video already? I can't quite remember, but... Um, yeah, I do feel like they are. And so from what I remember, I feel like these are a little bit drier, um, but not like terribly. I felt like when I wore them, they didn't like make my under eyes look all creepy or or dried up or crusty or anything. Um, they, they were just really, really great. Um, and I would just say, you don't need a lot. Use, a ver use them very sparingly and do one eye at a time. Like I would use these for my under eye circles and I would only do one eye at a time because I feel like it does dry kind of fast. So you wanna do, you know, work quickly, use, do one eye at a time. And then they're great. Um, so I've, I'm very, very happy with these actually. I liked them a lot more than I thought I did first impressions and would recommend them. I think they're a great concealer. All right, let's move on to powder. So I still have this in here. This one's almost gone. I actually made a pretty good dent on this one. Um, this one's just a standard one that I just keep in here until I finish it up. And it's the Milani Multitasker powder. Okay, and then the other, only other powders in here. Well, I guess for, I have some powders here, but anyways, we'll talk about these. The other powders I have are, again, from CoverGirl, some of their new uh, True Blend Mineral um, powders. Now, um, I didn't really use the translucent one that much. I really gravitated towards using the banana one because I like the yellow to kind of help with my dark circles so I will just say right off the bat I probably will be de decluttering this one maybe to one of my sisters or something um, because I don't need to keep it in my collection I don't imagine myself gravitating towards the translucent one as much so I'm gonna go ahead and keep the banana one now I did also want to mention that um, last in my last makeup basket, I mentioned that I thought I caught a glimpse of some like some kind of light reflecting pigments in these, but I couldn't quite capture it here. The only thing I don't like about this really is that they're so messy. Um, anyway, so this is what it looks like, and I couldn't quite capture the light reflecting pigments, and I didn't know if that was my imagination, if these even are supposed to be like illuminizing or anything like that. Well, in the right lighting, I happened to capture um, the, the, the little sparkle that's in it. It's so fine, and it's so like, just like, 
hard to see that I wasn't sure. But anyways, I finally captured it. I'm going to show you guys a little clip here. I'll maybe just put it on the screen here so you guys can see what I mean and I'll keep talking. Um, but I was like, oh wow, yeah, there really is that, that light reflecting t um, thing to it. So that kind of made me like these a little bit more. Um, and I, cause I like that. I like anything that's going to be a little bit luminizing, especially under my eyes for my dark circle to anything to help them look a little bit brighter, look a little bit more awake. So anyways, the one downside to these that, that in my opinion, and I've said this pretty much every time I've used these is that these are a little bit more of a heavier, um, powder. There are other powders that I like to use that are just very lightweight, um, feeling and I could kind of pack them on without them getting cakey. But if you use too much of this powder, you will end up cakey. So that's the one downside I don't like about this. I have to be very careful. And that way I really, really enjoyed it. So not a favorite, but definitely one that I think is very nice. So, um, yeah, so I will be keeping this. I'm going to go ahead and declutter the translucent one. All right, let's move on to some setting sprays. So I have two, I had, I have four in here, but I had two that were new last month. So this is the Beauty Bakery, um, baking spray. It smells like vanilla. This one, in one of my videos when I was using it, you can hear it sounding like something is up with the, the spray nozzle, like, or the sprayer, whatever it's called. And, um, it, it doesn't do it anymore because now it's like not really spraying properly. So I don't know if this is just how this one sprays or if I got some kind of weird dud, but, um, this one, the sprayer is like not good. So I was having issues with it sounding like it was a dying balloon, to be honest. And you could hear that in one of my videos. Um, and then after that, it like kind of stopped spraying, like it stopped spraying, right? I don't even know if you can see, like it just kind of squirts super, super weird. And so that was a big disappointment for me. So, um, if I do use this, I have to like really extend my arm all the way away from my face and kind of carefully spray because it doesn't want to spray right for me. And because it is an aerosol spray, which is one of the things I was excited about for this. Um, I can't really like, there's really no other way for me to get <laughs> product out. So unfortunately, while I wish this would have been a win for me, it's kind of a dud for me just for the fact of the sprayer. Of course, it could just be mine. I'm not saying all of them are like this, so it could be a good a good setting spray. But from my experience with this one, I think I had a dud with the with the um, the nozzle. And if any of you guys have tried this one, I'd love to know if your your sprayer is good or if you're having kind of like a similar experience because that's unfortunately a bummer. But some some positives to it. It smells like vanilla, which I love vanilla. And this one is more of a mattifying setting spray. Um, and that was something I was really excited about because I know the Morphe one that I love is more of a dewy setting spray. So I was really intrigued to try another aerosol setting spray that was more of a mattifying one or just like a natural finish one. But um, I will say that I do, I think, <sighs> I, I, I hate even saying it, but I will say I think I like the Morphe one better. Um, and I don't think that's just because I have more dry skin. I just think that I don't, I don't know. I feel like even though the Morphe one definitely can make me feel a little bit too dewy and I don't want to overuse it, I like the look of that better than I like the way my face looks with this, this spray. It's just a little bit maybe too matte for me. So it could be something to look into if you have, you know, more oily skin. Um, it would, it's, and you want to try an aerosol spray or maybe you tried the Morphe one and that one didn't work for you. Maybe this would be a good option for you guys. Unfortunately, I just don't know if I could keep using it because the spray is so wonky. So that was a really big bummer for me. All right, and then I also bought new the um, Morphe and Jeffrey Star setting spray because I love the Morphe setting spray, you guys already know, but I was intrigued by this because it's supposed to have a strawberry scent and I'm a sucker for anything scented, especially strawberry or vanilla. So I was really intrigued and I gave in and bought this because it was available on Ulta. Um, and this one, I also had issues with the nozzle. Like this one sprays out so stinking wonky. Oh, what the heck? It's actually spraying nice today. I wonder if it worked its little kink out. Okay. Well, every other time I've had it spray out super wonky and one part like jet streams out crazy, but I don't know what the heck. Anyways, um, that's very interesting. How weird. Um, that was gonna be my one complaint about this. And I thought it was interesting too, because I watched the video from Annette of Annette's makeup corner and she did a review on that, this spray as well and said her spray nozzle was a little bit funky too. And I was like, I wonder if there was just like a bad batch or something with the packaging because I'm having issues with my nozzle too, but I don't know, maybe it worked itself out. So 
Anyways, I like the scent. Um, it's definitely, it seems the same as the regular Morphe one, although I don't know if it's my imagination, but this one almost seems like it, it, it makes my face even dewier than the regular Morphe spray. That could totally be in my imagination. I don't know why. Um, so, but anyways, I don't think it'd be something I'd repurchase. I think I'll just keep using the regular Morphe spray because it, um, this one is a little bit more expensive, um, probably because it's the collab with Jeffree Star and I don't really feel like paying the $2 extra just because it's scented. I wanted to try it, I tried it, and and I'm good like I'm, I'm fine with the regular spray so anyways yeah that's my thoughts on this all right and then two other setting sprays these are just kind of tried and true drugstore ones these are ones that I used in my drugstore makeup tutorial some of my very favorites from the drugstore so the Milani make it last setting spray which is this little travel size and then the pixie beauty makeup fixing mist this is the rose water and green tea one love both of these both of these have very beautiful misters on it very fine mists love them so much um I think I'm gonna take some other setting sprays this month, so I'm gonna go ahead and put these back too. Let's move on to a bronzer. You guys, the infamous, is that what I decided to call this? Infamous, I don't know if that's really accurate or not. Cocoa contour that has been in my makeup basket every month since I started doing makeup baskets. I'm pretty sure, yeah, but guess what? Dun da da da! I have finished it up. I mean, you can see there's kind of little bits here in the corner, but I, I'm done and I'm so excited to be done with this. Um, obviously not using this because as you can see, it has some sparkle in there, which I'm not about for my whole face. Um, but anyways, I'm so proud of myself for finishing this up. I'm so, I'm so excited. You guys don't even know. Um, part of me is a little bit sad just because I love this, I love these shades. And this won't be something I repurchase, not because I don't like it, but because I'm so over face palettes. I'm just not about them. They're just exhausting to me. I'd rather just have single pan products and just use those. <laughs> and especially because, look it, I won't use this. But yeah, so I'm, I'm sad to be done with this, but also so, so happy to be done with it as well. <laughs> All right, in addition to that, I did go ahead and put this in there. This is just a little deluxe sample size of the tro yeah, size of the Chocolate Soleil bronzer. This is actually not the same as the other two um, bronzer shades that are in that Cocoa Contour palette. This is kind of somewhere in the middle. So I think there's a light cocoa and a deep cocoa contour shade, um, and they are different than this. I remember when I first got that palette, I wanted to compare them because I really liked the Chocolate Soleil bronzer, and I was like, are they the same? They're not. Um, but that being said, I do really like like this shade too. And I also feel like the ones in the Coco Contour palette are a little bit warmer, whereas this one's a lot more of a neutral-ish shade. Kind of cool tone, but I think it seems more neutral because I could get away with wearing it without looking dirty. So anyways, I put this in here on the chance that I maybe used up um, my Coco Contour and then I can use this because it's a similar shade that I can that I can wear and get away with. And um, anyway, so I did end up using this a couple times this month. Um, really, really liked it. I think I might actually keep this in here um, to use for traveling. So um, it'll it'll kind of work out perfectly for that. And then for these two, now these were products that I wanted to give kind of like a second chance. Oh, every time I see the packaging, it still like is like, oh, it's so pretty. Um, anyways, these are the Urban Decay Naked Skin Shape Shifter Palettes. I did receive these in PR and I hadn't used them in forever. I actually had them put away on my shelves instead of like in my drawers here where I keep all my face products. So I forgot about them and I couldn't remember what I thought about them. So I wanted to put them to use this month and I actually did use them quite a bit. Um, I didn't really use the medium dark shift one, but I did use the light medium one um, quite a bit. Now the thing with these is that they have the powders and then the creams um, all in one little palette. And I do think this is a beautiful little palette. It's very, very convenient. I love how sleek it is. Like, look at the size of it. It's very nice. Um, it's just beautiful. And I like that it does have a little mirror on here if you, on both sides if you want. And then the, the, the um, closure, the clasp, is a pretty strong magnet. Now, I'm a weirdo and I keep the boxes, so I would always keep this in the box anyways. But if you were traveling with this, it's pretty sturdy. Okay, and so here's the thing. The powders, I love. I love that it has, it's got a warmer tone bronzer. This one's a little bit more of a neutral or cooler tone bronzer or contour color. A matte shade, and I did, this was the other powder that I mentioned earlier that I did use a couple times um, throughout the month. And then on my channel, I think in one of my chit chat get ready with me's. So if you're, um, I li did list in the description box, but if you wanna see that in action, you can watch that video or skip forward to where I put that on. And the powder, bronzer, and, and I think even the highlight, yes, um, I used was this palette. Anyway, so it's got this matte shade and they're like beautifully creamy. Let me go ahead and just swatch them for you guys. So just look how creamy that is. These, oh, 
I, <laughs> I'm sad because, listen, here's the thing. I think I'm going to declutter these, but not because I don't think they're good. I had to wipe my hand for a second. Here's the, um, there's a highlighter shade. <sighs> they're beautiful. Like, the quality is great. And I kind of want to keep these. <sighs> I don't know if I will use them that much. I, let me just say, I won't use the, the creams. I did attempt to use the creams a couple times and I just, it was okay. I just ended up going over it with powder anyways. Like I'm just not into cream. I don't understand cream. I don't like the way they feel. Now these feel nice. They're like emollient. Um, they're not like terrible or anything. They're, they're, let me go ahead and swatch these too. They're nice, but I just don't understand cream. I don't understand cream products. I don't really understand how to best use them. I think people use them when they want more of a natural look, but I, ju I just, to me, can't seem to get my head around using them. I don't, I don't like it. I just didn't, I didn't enjoy using them, you guys. That's just the truth. So I feel like if I keep this, it kind of is a waste because all of this is going to waste. And I feel like, I wonder if I just gifted them to like one of my sisters um, or a friend who might use these they would appreciate it so more so much more and i'm i'm sad because it's just so so nice but i honestly just don't and like i said before with the coco contour i'm sad about it but i'm just not into the whole face palette thing it is convenient it's wonderful they're great um especially if you are someone who travels a lot this is like a all whole thing in one thing and it's very convenient it's just i and and here i am trying to talk myself out of it i'm telling i'm trying to talk myself into keeping it and that's silly i think i just need to declutter this honestly i need to gift these to a friend while they're still good to use um because look at this these are beautiful i felt like i love the result of my face did not love the creams but the powders like i would keep it if it was just the powders alone but because it has the cream i just feel like it's a waste on me um so i need to give these i, I need to declutter these so i enjoyed using them this month though and glad that i gave them a second chance but uh yeah these just gotta go <laughs> the good thing about doing these makeup basket videos it's really helped me to be just so much more realistic concerning my makeup like habits and my makeup collection what i'm using and what i'm not using and yeah i am a beauty youtuber and so i do get sent a lot of products for free it's not like i'm personally wasting my own money but it still makes me sad to have products Products just sitting here not being used when they're good products there's no reason really that I'm not using them it's just that I always have so many other products to use that I favor using um, and so I just have to be realistic with myself and while uh, I, part of me wants to keep these realistically I don't see myself really reaching for them a ton unless I want to specifically keep these in my makeup mask every month like I did with Coco contour but that one was already so close to being gone that was a big reason I kept it and, and did that these ones I just have to be realistic and, and and get rid of them so all right let's move on to some blushes so i did grab out this one from stalazi the barbados palette and i actually only use this i think once or twice this month even though i did have quite a tan previously in the summer um these were still quite dark for me like this one's such a beautiful shade but even that was really really pigmented and dark for me i knew these ones wouldn't really work but i thought maybe i'll grab these as like an eyeshadow or something i really feel like i should do that at some point is use these as eyeshadows because they are absolutely stunning and then these are highlighters which i didn't really use much at all let me go and swatch these i don't know if i did that last time but I gotta show you how gorgeous these are. Okay, seriously, are these not some of the most stunning shades you've ever seen? This shade is gorgeous. Um, I kind, like I said, I could kind of get away with it, but it was a little bit too too pigmented and too dark for me. But they're just creamy, very pigmented, beautiful shades. But anyways, yeah, I'm gonna put that away this month. Um, I might need to just gift this to somebody, but I keep thinking these are gorgeous. They would be gorgeous if I use them as eyeshadow, so I kind of want to keep around. And here I am talking about trying to be realistic with my collection, and I want to keep this. But you know what? Don't ask me to do too much. Okay, come on. Down the line, it might be something I up decluttering you know it just gave me some time it's hard enough as it is all right and then i have <laughs> this is a face and eye palette um and this is from juvia spice it's the queen palette Ooh, it got a little messy i did continue to use this quite often um i use this shade sister to sister is a beautiful blush shade on me it doesn't look like much it looks very much so like kind of close to my skin tone but literally it's very very pigmented it can be built up and it's so so beautiful as a blush on me also, this shade, FDV Approved, is a gorgeous highlighter. I think I swatched these before, and I actually already have a video. Look at me. Look at the pigmentation on that. Covered up my tattoo. No ish. So, issues, by the way. Um, oh, 
stunning. I did a video on this, if you haven't seen, I'm sure you guys have by now, it's kind of old news. Um, <laughs> old news, quote unquote, that's so terrible. Um, so, if you, but if you haven't seen that, I will link that video if you guys want to see the cool look I did with this. I was very, very proud of it, and it didn't get as many views as I thought it might. So that kind of made me sad. I put a lot of work into that video. Um, anyways, um, I do think I... Oh, mm, I was going to say I was going to put this away for this month, but I do believe I'm going to be doing a full face of Juvia's Place products, and I'll probably need this for the highlight and blush. So... This might stay in my makeup basket, but probably won't be something I super use a ton, but mostly at least for that video. So I'll go ahead and keep this in here for, for this next month. All right, so more blushes I have. Okay, so remember when I said I needed to purchase products for uh, my drugstore video? I did end up purchasing two new blushes. So first I had picked out this one from CoverGirl. It's their Peach Punch Blush. It's, oh, just opening it from here, I could smell it. It smells so, so good, um, like peaches. Very, very nice. It's a beautiful little blush. Um, I feel like it's a lot more springy, though, <laughs> um, for the fall. Now, I don't, know if you can, I don't even know if you can see that over the other swatches. Let me put it right here. Really, really pretty. It has a nice little luminosity to it. I really enjoyed using this. So I actually used this for quite a bit um, this month. I think I even used it in a couple of different videos, maybe Instagram videos, I can't quite remember. But anyways, um, really, really like this a lot. I do think I'm going to put away because, like I said, I feel like it's a little bit more of a... Not so much a fall type of blush, so I think I'm going to put it away, but I did really, really enjoy this a lot. I'm glad I got it. So anyways, like I said, because that one was a little bit more of a spring type of color, I ended up picking up this one from Wet n Wild. This is their Mellow Wine um, colored blush, and that was definitely much more of a fall shape. I feel like I have a type. Do you notice this one looks very similar to the... Juvia's Place Queen palette one, as well as the one I was kind of gravitating towards in the Barbados palette from Stilazzi. This color, um, I really liked it. So I'm, I think I'm actually going to keep this in my um, basket this month just because it is new. Um, this was, I got maybe just a couple days before I um, did my uh, drugstore video. So I only used it a little bit. Um, so I think I'm going to keep that in my basket this month because I really did like it. It's just a matte blush, um, really, really beautiful. All right, and then next up is my Bitter Lace Beauty Berry Treasure Highlighter. I think this was in my mas makeup basket for um, August as well, but I didn't get as much use out of it that I thought I would, so I put it in for September, and I actually did get quite a bit more use out of it this this last month, and so was really, really happy about that. Let me swatch it. It's a beautiful highlighter. It smells like coconutty. It's really, really beautiful, but since I got more use out of it this month like I wanted to, I'm going to go ahead and take it out of my basket um, this month for October and put some new products in. Next up is the Pure Times Barbie highlighter. This one's beautiful. Um, if you have not seen yet, I do have a whole video testing out all the Pure Times Barbie um, makeup products that they released. I really love this highlighter, but I actually didn't end up um, using it uh, very much more after that video because I put my stuff away and then kind of forgot about it instead of putting it in my makeup basket. And then when I was remembering about it, because I grabbed the palette to use it some more, the eyeshadow palette, I was like, oh my gosh, I haven't really been using this, this highlighter. So I put it in pretty much for the last week of this this last month September um, and it's so so pretty so this shade up here the the because it's in three this pinky one is a little bit more of a chunkier glitter I'm gonna go ahead and swatch all of them so you can see I like this middle shade the most so I'm glad they made that the biggest color and then this bottom one is like a little bit more of a chunkier gold as well but mixed together they are stunning and they give such a gorgeous glow I was very happy with it but because like I said I didn't use it as much as I had wanted to this last month just pretty much the last week I think I'm going to go ahead and keep this in here for this month's makeup basket so you get a little bit more use out of it since it is still fairly new to me and I really enjoy it so then I have three more highlighters, um, and these were the new highlighters that I um, received in PR from CoverGirl. And you guys know if you watch that video that right off the bat I uh, was very impressed with these highlighters. They are absolutely stunning. Let me tell you the shade. So this one right here is Gilded Glory. Why can't I read? I'll swatch these as well. Here's that one, Gilded Glory. For anybody curious if you're looking for a new drugstore highlighter or just need a drugstore highlighter. Beautiful. So Gilded Glory. This one is Pearl Crush, really, really beautiful. Oh, and they're so creamy and soft, you guys. So that one is Pearl Crush, beautiful, you guys. Okay, this one is Rose Quartz. Let's see which one I didn't use yet. I so recommend these, oh my gosh. They're just 
stunning highlighters and like they're around six bucks or something so so good so i really enjoyed those used all three of these just interchangeably um, a lot throughout this last month um i'm kind of tempted to keep them in here for this month again but i kind of want to see what else i have for highlighters and what i will want to use but so these will be kind of a maybe for going in again um yeah, so that's it for my makeup basket. Oh, I do have some eyeshadow palettes to show you, so let me get through those, and then we'll move on to some new products for this month of October. Okay, so really quickly, um, in these baggies are my eyeshadow collection with NBA Cosmetics, the Vintage Romance Loose Shadow Collection. Um, anyways, I had talked about how I wanted to do a video um, talking about how to use loose shadows and creating some more looks using my collection with NBA Cosmetics, and, and I started that, and because of a lot of things that came up, um, I didn't get to film as much as I had planned like there was a whole week where I had changed things around um, and try to organize things so that way I can film three times in one week um, normally I could only film one time in a week so usually I try to batch film I'll film like two to three videos in, in one day because I only can film the one one day a week well try to work things out so I could film three days um, in this one week and I plan to do two videos a day at least um and then some stuff happened i talked about that in my um life updates to chat get ready with me video so if you've watched it you already know but there was just a lot of stuff so a lot of my plans did not really work out and happen um that week so i i didn't get to finish this video and my ideas for it and kind of put importance on some other videos that i need to get out so um unfortunately I, I did use these quite a bit, but I didn't film with them like I had planned to. So I will be using these some more and hopefully get that video up this month at some point. And I do plan on doing a nice little giveaway um, in that video too. So stay tuned for that in case this might be something you're interested in. But yeah, just want to mention that. Okay, and then the Pure Cosmetics Times Barbie eyeshadow palette. Um, this one I did use actually a couple times um, this last, last month. I really like it. I will update more of my thoughts on this. I don't want to talk too much about it because I'll be talking about that in my rewind and replay video. So stay tuned for that. Um, I had wanted to get more use out of my Pom Pom Springs palette, but I actually didn't get around to playing with this anymore either. So that's unfortunate, but I do have some ideas that I really want to do with this palette. So I think I might keep this in again for this next month, but not super sure. Um, let's see. I got a little bit more use out of both of these palettes. Nothing that I filmed, but just that what I would play with and, and create looks with um, on just random days, Sundays, and things like that. So I did get a little bit more use out of these. I'm really glad for that. All right, since we're on to palettes right now, um, let's just go ahead and get into some of the newer palettes that I have for this month. And like, I don't know if I'm going to... Um, have other new palettes coming this month i'm not really sure what's going to happen but as as for right now here's some of the newer palettes that i have recently got that i think i want to try to put in get some more use out of this this uh, next month so i did get the urban decay naked honey palette i have played with this a few times since getting it i did do one video on a, a makeup tutorial so if you want to see it in action i'll link that video if you haven't seen it um and I really haven't been enjoying this palette, but I think I would like to get a little bit more use out of it. And if you guys are interested, I can make another video or another tutorial on it if you guys want. Let me know. Okay, and then I recently just got the Coral 3 palette from um, Juvia's Place. So I would like to play with that. I think this might be one of the palettes I use um, in my full face of Juvia's Place palette. But you guys let me know because I have, I have another palette, the green one. I think it's just like the Nubian 2 or the Nubian. I can't quite remember um, that I could use this one. And then I also have these other two palettes from Juvia's Place that I could use as well. Now, I did already film a video on the No Band palette. I did two looks to two tutorials using this palette. And again, I will link that video. And if there's too many links in the, the eye here, um, I will uh, put them in the description box. So check there. And if I forget to link them, I'm sorry. Sometimes my mind slips just remind me or just just ask me and I'll try to link them anyway so I do have a video um on this already and I really like this palette the warrior three but it didn't seem like there was as much interest for this palette but I think it's so pretty and I would love to use this some more too so if you want to see content with this or just any of the other ones let me know oh also in that video that I keep mentioning the video of my like life updates get ready with me I did do a palette bingo using both of these palettes and did a look with that so anyway so those are some of the palettes that I have that are newer to me that I want to get a little bit more use out of this month so with that let's go ahead and get on to the face products that I'll be using this month all right before we go into my drawer let me just show you some of the newer products I got so recently I got the um, Juno & Co Moonshine um, it says it's a miracle cream, but it's like a moisturizer and a primer in one. I did get some of this, and I did actually use this in that video that I've been talking about, my life updates, get ready with me. 
But to be honest, I have not, I, I was so in like talking about everything that I didn't really think about this. I just used it. So you guys can see an action kind of, but I don't really remember anything about it or what I think of it. So obviously I want to put it to a test, the test, a use it this month, see what I think of it. Um, and that way I could kind of update you guys um, my thoughts and like a future uh, rewind replay video. So yeah, that's something new. And then I got some goodies from Ciate London. They did reach out to me to send me a few of their products. I got their um, Glitter Flip lipstick, which I have a couple of these and tried these. They're really fun, really cute. Um, that's not necessarily something I'll include in the basket because I don't do lippies, you guys know that. Um, then I was sent their Wonder Wand Mascara, which I've tried before and I liked, but I feel like I remember it flaked on me, so I'm not sure how I feel about it, but I'll give it a try again. Um, and then I was sent their Dewy Sticks. This is um, a luminous highlighting balm, which is very interesting to me. I'm, like I said, I'm not super into cream products, and this is a cream product, um, but it looks really, really pretty, and it smells delicious. It smells like vanilla, so I'm very intrigued by it. Let me... Just swatch it here. So it's basically just like, it looks pretty. Like putting on the skin, it just gives this like wet, like dewy glow. Oh, if if this was something I would wear, like if I weren't really doing much makeup, because you guys know I pack on the powder. So if I'm wearing this, putting on powder might defeat the, the look of this. But if I was just doing minimal makeup, maybe just a little concealer and put this on for a little, like a little glow, or maybe look, use it on my decollete. Is that how you say it? Decollete, decolletage, I don't know. That might be cute. So I'm gonna give that a try. I don't think I'm, did I put, should this count as a makeup basket item? I don't know, I'll stick it in here anyway so you guys know. But the main thing I wanted to put in my makeup basket this month is this, I'm very intrigued by. This is their Watermelon Burst Hydrating Primer. Now I didn't even know this was something they were coming out with, so it's a new item, I think, um, that it's a hydrating and pore refining primer. <laughs> Those kind of claims always kind of get to me because it's how do you really tell? Like I, I used the It Cosmetics primer for a couple months and still wasn't really sure if it was refining my pores, I don't know. Maybe I don't have large enough pores to really tell the difference, I don't know. But it is watermelon and that really intrigued me, but also look how cute this looks. This is just a really cute looking product and I don't know if it's scented or not. I'm gonna have to squeeze them out and, t and uh, smell it just to see. Um, but, and it looks like it's like a gel consistency. So I'm gonna go ahead and try it right now. Oh, okay. Oh, very, very kind of fluid and jelly-like. Ooh, it does smell like, not quite like, it's almost like a, perfumey watermelon scent. So not like a sweet candy watermelon scent, but like a little bit more perfumey. Yeah. Oh, that's very interesting. It's very fluid, very what? Look at how it's almost watery like. Oh, that's weird. Okay, so I'm really curious to put this to it to the test as a primer. Um, a little bit goes a long way, clearly. I'm still kind of rubbing it in, <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, very intrigued. So, um, yeah, I, I'm, this will be something I test out this next month. So those will be something I want to use as my primers this month, but I do want to pull out like a tried and true primer because like I said, I'm going to be traveling this weekend and I want to um, bring something that I know really works for me. So we're going to get into my drawer for that. All right, welcome to my base drawer. So um, what I think I'm going to grab um, two primers. I think I want to grab one of the... Um, Makeup Forever Hydrating or Nourishing, one of these primers. I think these are almost gone too, so I might as well just pull them out and use them up um, to travel with um, because these are primers that I know I love and they actually do help my makeup last longer throughout the day. So these I know work and I wanna travel with things that work with for me so there's no guessing game. So I'm gonna, um, I'll just put both of them in there. And then I think I wanna put this one, the No Problem Primer. This was in my makeup basket, I think just two months ago or a month or so ago. Um, but this is another one that I do know also really works for me and really helps my makeup to stay and last all day. And that's what I'm gonna want because I'm going to uh, Chicago. I'm gonna be working the, I'm gonna be working the NBA Cosmetics booth at the Women's Expo. I wanna make sure my makeup looks flawless all day. And I know these primers work for me. So, all right, now as far as foundation. So I have some new foundations. So, well, first off, let me just tell you guys. Um, Makeup Forever was very kind to send me over some more shades of the um, Ultra HD foundation, which I remember has, was a foundation that I really, really enjoyed, really loved, fell in love with it when I first started using it. I eventually um, really fell for their stick version of this foundation because I just I just like the ease of a stick foundation. So I ended up using that a lot more. Um, but since they sent me some of these, I figured I'm gonna go ahead and throw one of them in my makeup basket this month. Now I do already have 
one over here that um, that is open that I'm gonna go ahead and use instead of opening up one of these new ones, but I just really appreciate that they sent me over a couple more shades. So because they did, and I'm kind of curious to remember my thoughts on this foundation, I'm gonna go ahead and pull out um, the Makeup Forever Ultra HD. The shade I have down here is Y35 for anybody curious, and um, use that as one of my foundations this month. But I also got some new foundations from Juvia's Place. So, as I mentioned, I don't even know how many months back, I had mentioned I was gonna be, I knew I was gonna be getting these foundations. Um, and thought, okay, I'm gonna, that'll be in my makeup basket for this month, and I'll update you guys. Well, they never came. And then, just randomly, last week, they finally showed, showed up, and I was like, wow, I was really surprised. But not only did they send me foundations, they sent me the brush, which I'm really excited to try. They sent me three concealers, and they sent me two powders, and that's where they also sent me the coral palette. So anyways, I'm definitely going to be trying these this month. I'm planning to do, like I already mentioned, the Full Face of Juvia's Place um, products, and test these out. That's something to stay tuned for. I'm not gonna actually stick this in my makeup basket. I'm gonna keep it in this little bag here. Look how cute this is, um, because I have to figure out which what my shade is. I kind of was thinking that maybe I'll grab the Born This Way foundation from Too Faced because this one is almost gone and I've had it for <laughs> probably way too long. So I kind of want to see about just using this up um, this month. So I'll try to finish this and then the Maybelline Matte and Poreless foundation this month. Kind of dwindle down my collection a little bit. Oh yeah, and then over here, these are some of the minis I have of the Pure Cosmetics Love Your Selfie Foundation. I don't know if I'm necessarily gonna keep these in my basket, but these I do think it might be something I take with me when I travel to um, Chicago to use. Now this one is obviously very deep. I use this one to contour with. Um, since there's not very much of this foundation, I usually just use this where I need it, like under my eyes and in my T-zone, and then I'll just use this to contour with, and it kind of covers the rest of my face, so that's kind of a perfect little duo. So I'm gonna grab those out too, just so you guys know. Let's con see about concealers. Um, I have a bunch over here. Look, I still have this one that I have not tried yet. I wonder if I should give that a try. This is the Wander Beauty. Um, Dualist Matte and Illuminating Illuminating Concealer. This I got a long time, not a long, well, several months back now, um, in a makeup swap I did, and I have not tried it yet, so it's a um, cream concealer, which I haven't used that in ages, that kind of concealer, and then um, a liquid one. So I'm kind of curious to try that. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, stick that in there and give it a try. And then I think what I wanna grab is, um, Hmm, what do I want to get? Maybe... Oh, look at this one's like almost gone. How, what? Did I really use this one that much? So this is the Catrice Liquid Glamifosh Concealer. This is a concealer that I really, really enjoy. I mean, clearly, you can see. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and work on finishing some products up. Let's see. I don't think I could actually finish this all up next um, this month, but I don't know. I'll stick it in there. That's cool. Um, and then I kind of think... Hmm, what other concealers do I want to try? Oh, you know what? I'm going to pull this in here, too. I want to try this, because I'm kind of considering, now that I have so many Maybelline products in here, maybe I'll do like a full face of Maybelline, too. Or just do another drugstore video, because you guys seem to really like the drugstore video, so... I'm up for doing more of them. But yeah, this is the Maybelline Age Rewind Concealer, which is a concealer that I remember really, really loving too. So I'm gonna go and throw that in my makeup basket this month too. All right, grabbing um, a setting spray. As you can see, I am overflowing with setting sprays because I'm a crazy lady. Um, I want to grab for sure my, oh my God, I'm almost done with this. I don't wanna be out of it. This is my Makeup Forever Mist and Fix Setting Spray. Love this stuff so much. I'm gonna go and grab that to um, use this month. Uh, maybe try with because it's one of my favorites and then I think I'll go ahead and grab this um, all-nighter this is a summer solstice scent since it is a travel size and I'll probably travel with that one as well now I don't even though that may seem like enough for most people that will not be enough for me for the month I will definitely need some more setting spray than that so what do I want to use I do have this brand new one down here. Look how big it is. The Ofra setting spray, it is amazing. Look how, and it's taking up my whole box because it's so huge. It's such a, such a, such a good deal. Such a good setting spray. Oh, I'm trying to put this on the wrong thing. Such a good setting spray. But should I use up some of my other setting sprays first? I probably should. Um, 
I, you guys, I don't ever say this, but just so you guys know, I pretty much always have the Morphe setting spray in my makeup basket every month. I don't always use it for my face, but I use it for my eyeshadows more than anything. Love it for my face too, don't get me wrong, but I always use it for my eyeshadows. So that's something that's always in my makeup basket, just know. <laughs> um, that's why I have, I have two here, and then I have another one over here, and that's not even counting the Morphe and Jeffree Star one. Um, the Ciate London one. Uh, you know what? Yeah, I'll put this Ciate London one in there since I have an other Ciate London products too. And this one's almost gone too, so I might be able to dwindle down some more of my setting sprays too. So we're going to try to, this will be a month where I kind of try to empty up some products. This will be like a panning um, month, I guess, if you can think could pan setting spray. But this will be like a makeup panning month pretty much, I feel like. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do that for my setting spray. All right, so for powders, I already know I want to grab this. Now, this is in the Cover FX Perfect Setting Powder um, container. This is the actual Perfect Setting Powder. This one was an empty that I created my own concoction with. I mentioned this in a couple months, like a couple months ago when I used it. It's like a mixture of the Oh God, what is it by now? I think I put the RCMA No Color Powder in here. I put an e.l.f. under eye setting powder in here. I put a little bit of the Bin Nye Banana Powder in here. And then also a little bit of the <laughs> Too Faced Do You setting powder. It's like a crazy concoction that I ended up really, really enjoying and loving. I'm, I really like this. It's a powder that works for me. I'm gonna go ahead and stick this in there. This will be something I travel with. And then on that note, I think I might actually go ahead and take my cover effects the actual perfect setting powder with me let's see are these gonna look different enough that i'm gonna know the difference yeah i'll know the difference i might not even need that i just want to take it just in case this runs out but i'll have this to use this month too and then on that note because i know it works for me and because i love it for under my eyes i am going to go ahead and pull back out my urban decay a naked illuminizer um setting powder or beauty powder i love to use this for under my eyes setting under my eyes it's just beautiful so that's going to go in there this month it's something i like i said i want my tried and trues for when I'm traveling for my face to look the very best it can. Okay, um, let's see. Bronzer, okay, so now we know I have the Maybelline bronzer that's broken I need to fix. And then I do, like I said, I think I'm gonna travel with the Chocolate Soleil bronzer, this little travel size one. Do I want or need another bronzer in here this month? What do I have? So I've got, oh, I do have, you know what? Maybe I'll put this in here. So this is my Makeup Forever little palette. It does have um, three of their face powders. It's got a blush, a bronzer, and a highlight. Really like this. I feel like I need a different shade of this. This used to work with me more so when I'm very, very pale. I feel like it's in its very, very cool tone. I might need to see, I do think I have somewhere put away some other of their um, contour shades. So I might look for a deeper shade to switch this out with. Um, but yeah, I'll put that in there since I do have some other Makeup Forever products. As you can probably tell, um, I tend to try to gravitate towards using similar name brands um, products um, when I'm picking my products throughout the month. It kind of helps. I feel like you, grouping them together, using them together, I feel like it's more cohesive for videos and stuff like that too. So anyways, I think, yeah, I'm going to do that. So that'll take care of um, one blush and um, another contour and a highlight. So let's go ahead and move on to blush then. I do also have this one I'm going to keep in there this month. Um, and yeah, I think I'm just going to keep it to that this month for blush because I'll have the one in here, which I think is absolutely stunning. Yeah, it's very, oh, it's kind of light and peachy. Anyways, let me swatch those really for you guys. So that's uh, what those look like. So that should be fine for blush. All right, and then I have the highlight that's in the Makeup Forever one, but I think I want to take one of my MBA Cosmetics highlights because I am going to be working with MBA Cosmetics this month, and I do have these kind of like singles, but I do think I also have this one. This is the one I always tend to gravitate towards because it's so pretty, but I think I used it in a previous makeup basket. This is the Peach Glow one love it so much it's it's so so stunning just look at that it's, <laughs> it's magical um but let's see if there's another one maybe that i want to get some use out of this month so there is the this is mermaid cove this one may be cool oh wait is that the same one? Oh my god am i such a nerd no i don't think it's the same it's different so this is peach glow this one is coral glow yeah, you guys can tell I gravitate towards the same kind of highlighters, those warm golden tones. That might be one. I'll have to put it in a little palette. So these are cooler tone ones. That one's going to be a little bit too deep for me. That one might be a little bit too fair for me. This one I think is also peach glow. I have two peach glows. Um, oh, this one's pretty. Heart of gold. 
Um, no, I think I'm gonna go with Coral Glow. I'm gonna take that and put it in a little palette. And I think that's it. Is that it? I think that's it. <laughs> Let's take an inventory of the whole basket. Okay, so here's what my basket's looking like so far, and I feel like it's so bare and minimal compared to a lot of my makeup baskets in the past. Although, I mean, I do have several primers, several setting powders, several foundations, concealer, we got powders, bronzer, highlighter, yeah, we got a lot. So just uh, as a reminder, I was gonna put this one back in for a highlighter, so I'll also have this as well as the Makeup Forever one. So there is that. I'm gonna have to put this in a little palette. And then I was considering using these again, but I think I'll go ahead and put these away for this month then. So those these were maybes that I'm gonna go ahead and put away. Um, I think this is plenty. And then don't forget, I also have the Juvia's Place products that I have not put in there. Oh, and there's powders in that too. So I mean, I'll have those powders to, <laughs> to use as well. But like I said, I, those are new to me. So I don't know how they perform. I really wanted to stick with tried and true. So that's will have those and then probably after I'm done traveling I will um these will be in my makeup basket but I think I'll probably try to stick to just using the Juvia's Place powders so I can really put them to use this month and develop my thoughts so I can update you guys in a future video of my review of them um but again repeating myself I really just want to have a lot of my tried and true products for this month so um yeah I think that's gonna be it for my makeup basket this month um I really hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm gonna go ahead and put some other videos on the screen here if you guys would like to see more of my content. If you are new here and wanna check out some more of my videos, actually see my face on camera. Um, but yeah, with all that being said, I just wanna thank you so, so much for watching. And until next time, much love and hugs to you. Bye, beauty babes. Mwah!